Hey, what's this? Ugh. How do I plan to slay the Hun with dust on my pocket buttons? Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm out here today at the Two Gun Action Challenge match, where I'm going to be uh, running the equipment and uniform and gear of a late World War I U.S. Army infantryman. Thought this would be a cool thing to do. I've got my model of 1917 uh, Eddie Stone Enfield rifle here. Interesting twist about this rifle, it uses five round stripper clips, but it actually has a magazine capacity of six, because it is an adaptation from the 303 uh, British Pattern 1914. So that's cool. This is a 1918 dated rifle. To go along with that, I have a GI model of 1911 US property, World War I era 1911. Just to uh, really frustrate the stitch Nazis, I have a decent quality reproduction left-handed holster for that to fit me. And then I figured, yeah, if we've got that kind of stuff, why not add a French nail knife? Something that the uh, soldier could have very easily gotten from a French training compatriot. Uh, the, the US and the British and the French soldiers intermingled a fair amount. In fact, it's kind of interesting, a lot of the slang that came out of World War I is uh, corruption of French. At any rate, uh, the uniform that I have is one of the cool parts today, I think. Um, I got this from Mike Birch at Mike's Militaria, and the whole thing is custom tailored to fit me, or fit anyone else who orders one. Uh, he took like 15 different measurements for this, so neck's nice and, and comfortable, everything fits really well, and it's really, I think it's really cool. Um, it's going to be an interesting experience to, shooting, to shoot the match today in a reproduction uniform that's made the exact same way as the originals. So it's all wool. Uh, the jacket here, or the uh, tunic, is lined with poplin, so it's not quite as itchy as just straight wool. Uh, you can't see it because of my wool puttees, but the breeches are actually laced uh, down the side below the knee interesting little twist to uh, the 1917 U.S. uniforms. So, got that. I think that'll be a fun thing to run. If you're interested, check out Mike's Militaria, uh, Mike Birch. He's got a bunch of other cool stuff as well. And uh, top it off with a Brody helmet. So, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to win the match today with a bolt-action rifle and an old 1911, but I think we'll have a really good time. So, let's get to it. I could do about that.
German helmets are hard. It was four, right? Yeah. Who's target? Come on. Sorry, oh, load. He might not. He said what? Crouch contraption is insane. mentioned Polish plate racks in the Versailles Treaty. They should have. Outlaw those damn things. High right, low right, low right, low, high right. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, Cooper. <laughs> it. Over the top. <laughs> oh shit. Hit. 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 Couldn't quite do it. All right. And I lost my mag. You got it. You got yeah. it. Yay! Whew. Well, I don't know what we call that. Oh! Oh, what a fantastic weapon. Oh, yeah. Hey, All right. I made it. All right, guys. Overall, I think that actually went pretty well. A um, couple conclusions about the specific guns. First off, the 1917. I mentioned, I believe I mentioned at the beginning, that uh, General Hatcher, Julian Hatcher, who is one of the pivotal uh, figures in American arms development, uh, is on the record as saying this is the best rifle of World War I. And I would agree with him. I think this is a fantastic gun. Really, the only downside to it is that it's heavy. Uh, and that's something that I definitely noticed by the end of a couple of the longer stages. Is, this, like, after carrying that kettlebell, it got, it was harder to hold this thing up in the shoulder, and especially to hold it in the shoulder and cycle it from the shoulder. So, that was, that was an issue, but really the only issue. The sights on this are fantastic, the trigger's good, the bolt is good. It's just a very comfortable rifle to shoot, and I really enjoyed it. So I will definitely be making more use of this in the future, I think. Uh, also interesting to point out, it, because it's a conversion of the British five-round magazine P14, when they converted that from 303 to 30-06, they actually gained a round of capacity. So it holds six in the magazine, plus you can stuff a seventh one in the chamber if you want to, and that was handy. Uh, now the pistol... Uh, I, aesthetically, I like the 1911. I wish I liked it a little bit more. This was an original GI World War I era M 1911. So it hadn't had a number of the upgrades that were made in the 20s. As a result, it chewed up the back of my hand. Uh, you definitely want to hold that a little bit lower if you have big hands or normal sized hands or anything except Donald Trump hands. Um, I was. It also has a pretty stiff trigger on it. Um, not the world's greatest pistol, but you know what? It got the job done, especially uh, the, the Texas Star and the Polish plate rack went better than I was expecting. So that was, that was gratifying to me. Um, the uniform was not actually as nearly as uncomfortable as I had been expecting. Um, it is wool, top and bottom, but the tunic is lined with poplin and not uncomfortable at all. Um, the pants are a little bit itchy, but it's something you kind of get used to and start ignoring. Uh, I guess the advantages here of wool are that it, it maintains its insulation, uh, its insulating properties when it's wet, should you be somewhere other than the desert here. It's a very durable fabric. You could wear this for a long period of time uh, at the front without it just rotting off your body like a thin cotton probably. So overall, actually, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, didn't impede me really in any way. Uh, didn't impede my movement. The puttees work nicely. This one's slipping a little bit. But... Um, all in all, I'm very happy with the uniform as well. So, if you're interested, check out Mike's Militaria. Uh, he has several different uh, U.S. Army, U.S. Marine Corps. I think he's going to be adding French military as well. Uh, and totally custom tailored. So, a neat thing. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you like this sort of thing, please consider checking out my Patreon and supporting me. It's uh, what allows me to have the funds to run things like uh, quasi-expensive old bolt-action rifles in these. Thanks for watching.